Hello, everyone. In this video, I would like to present you a practical programming example on how to identify a very simple linear dynamical system with least squares. In this video, we are considering a single input, single output system. So that means that our input u is a scalar input and our state, which is also here considered as the output of our dynamical system, which we want to identify is also just a scalar quantity, okay? So therefore we have a first order system, uh, which is also called a PT1, so a proportional uh, delay element. Here in this sense I have written that with the time step delta t and the time constant tau. Uh, here's also delta t and the time constant tau and Vs would be something like the steady state gain between u and x. We can of course, um, yeah, combine or somehow summarize these parameters here in this parenthesis. So this parameter here would be the lump parameter A and this parameter here in this parenthesis would be the lump parameter B. So the task of this video is therefore obtaining data for X and U and we assume that we do not know these parameters A and B or Vs, delta T and tau beforehand but we want to identify A and B based on data over time. In this scenario, we will basically consider two cases. The first case is the noiseless case, so where we assume that the noise at the output of the system is basically not present. And in the second step, we will consider a typical measurement noise, which is added on the observables by our sensors before we can actually apply our least squares problem. In order to rewrite that as usual, first we of course can rewrite the right hand side. Um, so we therefore get x of k plus 1 is identical to x of k and u of k. Here I don't need to transpose them anymore as in contrast to the previous video because x and u are just scalars as mentioned. And this is our unknown parameter vector with a, b. Throughout. So as usual, y is equal to z times w, right? So in our typical uh, least squares fashion. And with that, we can basically obtain measurement samples. I need some extra space here for an addition later. So that would be x1 to x of n and on the right hand side we have x0 to x n minus 1 and here we have u0 to u n minus one, which we observe, okay? And of course, with multiplied with our unknown sensor, uh, with our unknown parameter vector, which is a and b, okay? So that is here then capital Y, our outputs, Z, our regressor matrix, times W, our unknown parameter vector. As this is a single input, single output system, we just need to apply the least squares solution once and not multiple times, as discussed in the previous video. If that would be a multi-output or multi-input system, we would need to apply that more times. Okay, so that's our problem. And now let's go through some Julia code. Uh, where we basically want to um, see how we can utilize our least squares, ordinary least square solution in, in order to solve that problem. In order to do so, we have defined here just the parameters quite quickly. So Vs, so our steady state gain is just the unit gain and as a time um, delay, so as a time constant tau, we assume just 15, which is just an arbitrary number. So what we do here is, we first generate some data for step-like change inputs, right? So the input u is basically jumping around between one and minus one 
And with that, we basically uh, go through our uh, model. So that would be, of course, a simulation of our model. In reality, we would get this model outputs via measurements. But here for the simulation, we will just simulate them ourselves. And if we uh, just uh, print out, if we just plot the system response for the uh, purple input, we get this greenish output, the state output. So this is basically our input is basically jumping around between one and minus one in a step-like manner. And we get this typical delayed response, first order PD1 response of a system, which could be some kind of a low pass filter, for example. Okay, so that would be the system response um, which we can observe, uh, which we can utilize in order to fill up our data matrices and our uh, output vector here in order to solve for the considered unknown A and B. And that is exactly what we do next here in our programming code, right? So we basically define our uh, problem. So we define basically our um, estimation problem in terms of the output vector Y, the regressor matrix Z. And then we just apply here at this line, this is just a standard ordinary least squares solution as we have already implemented and um, derived it many uh, lecture videos ago and apply it to this dynamical system, right? What we do then with that solution, so we have basically here in this line, we have solved for W for the unknown parameters A and B. And then we do some kind of a simple validation. So that means we plug in the found parameters in W in, an, uh, in a model prediction. So we assume that this um, parameter um, are accurately um, observed, accurately estimated. And then we plug them in into this uh, prediction model and then what we do is basically, as, in, as shown in this plot here, we compare the identified model versus the original model in the noise-free case. So, so far we don't consider the noise here at that point. If we do so, uh, what you might find irritating so far is that this is basically just one line while the legend indicates two lines. But this is due to the fact that in the noise-free case, we have an ideal uh, parameter estimation, right? So if you look here on the left-hand side, A and A hat, B and B hat are perfectly over each other. And therefore this validation plot, the true system response and the simulated predicted system response using the identified A and Bs, A hat and B hat, is just perfectly over each other. So that would be the, the perfect estimation or system identification case which we would like to see uh, in everyday routine. However, now comes the problem. We have not considered the noise so far, but as in all technical uh, uh, problems, we normally always have measurement noise. So that means we need to consider at all sampling steps some noise. So that would be nu plus one, and that would be nu plus n, right? So the measurement here is sub subject to some random mean free noise, Gaussian distributed with some covariance, constant covariance, so just a normal ordinary least squares uh, assumptions. And now comes a big problem, so to speak. If the noise is present here in this output vector, right, on the measurements of the states, then it's also present in the regressor vector, right? Because what we have basically here is just uh, the same information as in the output vector in the dynamical system case, just uh, transferred or just delayed by one sampling step, right? So the noise also has now an impact on the regressor matrix. And that is actually an issue, right? Because we did not consider that so far. We said always that our regressor matrix or the data which is represented in the regressor matrix is perfectly known. But actually, if we have output measurement noise in the dynamical case, we will also have noise impacts within the regressor matrix. Potentially, there could be also some input noise so at this side, if we might do not know our actuation device is 100% precisely, however, we do not consider that. But the key 
new element here is that we have noise in the regressor matrix, right? So noise impact in Z and in Y. And therefore, we also have another issue that since this noise here is just the delayed version of this noise in the, in the actual output vector, which we have considered y in the ordinary least squares, that also means that there is some temporal correlation between y and z, right? Because we have this delay, so that means there is some correlation, temporal correlation, between y and z due to the noise, and that would be another issue in terms of our standard assumptions on the ordinary least squares estimator, especially when it gets towards the uh, blue uh, parameter, so the best linear um, unbiased estimators, which definitely do not hold anymore for the dynamical case due to the noise in the regressor matrix and due to this temporal correlation in the output vector and in the regressor matrix. Okay, so new scenario, but let's see in practice how this will uh, impact our system identification problem. So we will basically just obtain here in this uh, example new data, so that basically means that we will add just some noise to the state response which we have sampled from the noise-free uh, system previously. And with this noisy data, so where we have now considered a very simple a mean-free uh, Gaussian distributed uh, with constant covariance noise, we will redo our parameter identification and we will do uh, the um, validation based on the estimated noisy parameter vectors again. And what we can now basically see is that due to this noise impact, uh, and the noise was actually, yeah, it is somehow significant, but it's not overly significant, we can basically find out two things. First, we can observe that the um, fitted model, so which is here the orange model, is not perfectly uh, overlaying anymore the ground truth model in terms of the dynamical response, right? So this is a dynamical response of the original model and the fitted model over time. And we can see that there seems to be some uh, systematic deviation between ground truth model and estimated model. And that can be also seen when we compare the ground truth parameters and the estimated parameters in terms of A and B, which are now significantly different from each other. So not only the prediction model is not accurate anymore, but also the parameters which we wanted to identify in this very simple linear case are not accurate anymore. So that means that in the practical sense, we can apply ordinary least squares to linear time invariant systems. However, we have to keep in our minds that if there is any noise, or at least any significant noise, that this will be a systematic deviation from our assumptions which we made to the best linear uh, unbiased estimator case. And that basically means that we will get um, a system identification result, which is not ideal. We will discuss that also in the next video a little bit more uh, in terms of potential limitations and issues with applying least squares to linear uh, systems. And then in the upcoming lecture videos, we will also discuss about alternatives, how we can actually identify a dynamical system from data without the usage of linear least squares in order to get rid of this issue, which we see here in our practical uh, programming example. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.